Hey there everybody, Master Geek here with another Geek World Online video review. I've returned after too long of a hiatus with a new product for you to sink your proverbial teeth into. Tonight's review is going to be on Evil Hat Productions Fate Core Kickstarter Draft from December 4th of 2012. Now for those of you who are interested in the product, I'm going to be posting a link to the Kickstarter page once this review is uploaded. This project has taken off like wildfire. Not only did it meet its goal within hours of going live on Kickstarter, but with seven days left still to pledge, they are at over $300,000 of their $3,000 goal. This has just unlocked a ton of stretch goals uh, from expansions to settings to a uh, Fate Accelerated. And the nice thing is that anyone that jumps on board this at uh, the $10 level or above gets PDFs of everything, uh, of all the various stretch goals. Now, in my new re review format, uh, I'm going to be focusing on what I consider to be the key concepts that I apply when I'm looking at the playability of any role-playing game. Rules are going to be discussed, but I'm not actually going to be rating them uh, on any kind of standalone basis, rather more so on how they fit what I consider to be the keys of a good role-playing game. The first area that I'm going to touch on with Fate Core is the idea. And I think one of the best ways to describe it is from a quote directly from the introduction, which is, Fate doesn't come with the default setting, but it works best with any premise where the characters are proactive, capable people leading dramatic lives. Now, Fate Core is, is also a designer-friendly system in that the minds behind the game were extremely open about how they created it, thus making it very easy to adapt to other games and to settings. Now, I say this from first-hand experience, honestly, as I'm just finished working on my design journal on my blog in which I'm adapting my personal Time Heroes RPG to the, I have found, much more appropriate system of Fate Core. The first mechanical aspect of the game I, I'm going to touch on is the uh, how the mechanic system works with the atmosphere that the designers intended for the game. This is, for me, quite possibly the most important of my key concepts. Do the mechanics of the game successfully capture the atmosphere the game is trying to create? And before I go into the specifics of this topic for Fate Core, I want to address a probable question. How do you discuss the atmosphere of a game in which there is no default setting. I think the best way to do this is by using the idea the game is meant to be narrative, fast-paced, and accessible to most anyone as the atmosphere uh, intended in the design of the game. Of course, I can't say this is 100% the intent of the designers, but it's what I took away from my read-throughs of the, of the book. Speaking of the book, I don't have a physical copy to hold in front of you as uh, I stated a little bit earlier, this is the Kickstarter draft of it. It's just a PDF that everyone who backed the Kickstarter um, is able to immediately download and go through. Uh, all the mechanics are there, the game is there, there's some formatting issues here and there. And, um, the best way to talk about the mechanics of Fake Core is, for me at least, simply to describe them. First, the game doesn't revolve around dice rolls. If an action doesn't do anything interesting or potentially complicate things, um, you don't need to bother, you don't bother rolling on it. Um, if an action does require a roll, Fate uses a set of four fudge dice. Each of these die, dice is uh, broken up into three symbols. Two sides have minus sides, two sides have plus sides, and two are blank. The basic roll, rolling mechanic is this. You roll the four dice, you add them up, and reach a number that ranges from negative four to positive four. If there's a skill that is going to apply to the situation, you add that number to the roll as well. Then you take that number and you apply it to what is called the fate ladder to determine your success. The fate ladder ranges from plus eight, which has a uh, actual ladder rank of legendary, all the way down to negative two, which is terrible. Now, how does the fate ladder itself come into play in the game? The two types of opposition in fate core are active and passive opposition. Active opposition is when two people are directly rolling against each other, and when the rolls are made, the person who rolled higher wins the contest. Passive opposition is when the game master chooses a level on the ladder and sets that as the difficulty for the action. If the total from the player is higher than that level, the action generally succeeds. If the total equals a difficulty number, it might succeed, but not to the extent the player wishes. And then if the total is under the difficulty number, the action might fail or it might 
succeed but at a cost or with other complications involved. Moving on to aspects. That's one of the biggies of fake core for me is the concept of the aspect. These are phrases that can have both positive and negative connotations. An example from the book is tempted by shiny things. These aspects can be invoked by spending a fate point in order to allow a reroll or add plus two to a roll. And with the example I gave of tempted by shiny things, the player might spend a fate point in order to use this aspect in assisting with determining how much a jewel is worth after pilfering it from a mansion. The game master can also do, perform something called a compel, in which the player um, has, is, then uses the negative side of the aspect. Again, with the tempted by shiny things example, the character might be distracted from their goal by the sight of some sort of treasure, and they need to go and acquire it at the expense of the rest of their party or of what their intended goal was supposed to be. This brings up fate points. Fate points can be used to do a few things. Um, first, as I mentioned earlier, they are used to invoke the positive side of an aspect. This allows the players to reroll the dice or add plus two to the total of a roll. They can also be used to create a scene aspect if a character aspect doesn't apply. If a player wants to invoke an aspect but doesn't have an appropriate one on their character sheet, a fate point can be spent to create a scene aspect. Uh, for example, say a wizard is trying to charge some thug head on. They only roll a total of plus one for their fighting skill. They want to make sure they do better than just a basic plus one, so the player is going to pay a fate point to state he telekinetically yanks a rug out from under the thug, granting him a plus two to the roll for a total of plus three. Now after that, scene as after that, the scene aspect itself remains in play, able to be used by others for the extent of that scene. And uh, most of the examples, that I should say, as you find um, in this review, are going to be examples that are taken more or less directly from the Fate Core book. Now, thirdly, fate points can be used to declare a story detail. This is basically the what a coincidence use for fate points. For example, a character might need to get a safe that is screwed into a wall. They could spend a fate point to say they just happen to find or have brought with them a power drill with which to remove the safe. Lastly, fate points are used uh, in certain higher powered stunts, which uh, stunts are something I'll talk about a little bit further on in the review. How does a player get fate points? That's where the compels come in. When a GM uh, compels a player to use the negative side of their aspect, the player can choose to accept the compel or not. If they accept the compel, they get a fate point for going through the pain and agony of the uh, negative side of part of their character kicking in. Next are skills. A character's skills are rated from plus zero, which is mediocre, to plus four, which is great, at least to start with. And when a roll is made, if a skill is going to apply to the situation, the player can add their rank of, uh, in the skill to that roll. Now, skills are used for four different things. To overcome. Skills are used to defeat challenges. It's your basic role to beat a difficulty number and then you succeed at what you're trying. They're used to create an advantage. Uh, skill can be used to discover something that already exists about an opponent or create a situation that helps you succeed. This is where you're going to use a skill to... A, attempt to discover an aspect that an opponent has in order to exploit it, or to create scene aspects um, that didn't previously, previously exist. This lets you discover and create aspects, as well as granting a free invocation of aspects that you create with it. They're used to attack. Uh, what, this is what you expect it to be, except in fate, depending on what the player declares, an attack can be physical, mental, emotional, or social. And then uh, fourth use, main use for skills is to defend which is the same as attack, but from the other side. Someone attacks you, you use a, a skill to defend yourself. Stunts are special effects that can change the way a skill works. They can add a new action to a skill. Uh, example from the book, Backstab lets the player use stealth to make physical attacks if the target doesn't know the character is there. Uh, it can be used to add a bonus to an action. The Arcane Expert stunt gives a plus two bonus to create an advantage using lore skill if the situation has to do with the supernatural or the occult, or a stunt can be used to create a rules exception. Normally a skill can only be used once in a challenge, uh, but the ritualist stunt allows a player to use lore in place of another skill, which would allow the player to use the lore skill twice in one extended challenge. 
And then after stunts, I want to touch briefly on combat. Basically, it's an opposed rule. The winner deals damage in the amount of how much they, they beat the defender by. The damage must then be absorbed via stress, which are some uh, boxes on the character sheet, um, or give a consequence, which is a negative aspect that's longer lasting than a simple stress uh, box check, such as a broken leg. If neither of these is able to be done, the character is out of the fight. Now, stress goes away after a fight with a few minutes of a breather. Um, but consequences, as I said, are longer lasting. Being taken out of a conflict is not the same as dying in Fate. The rules are pretty clear that generally in Fate Core, the only time a character should die is when it is narratively appropriate, and the GM and the player should pretty much agree that it is worth their, uh, their, their player character dying. Those are the basics of the mechanics, and honestly, they might be a little bit more than I needed for a simple review. Um, there is more I could touch on, but I just wanted to get the gist of how the game works across to you. And something I do particularly like is that the rules are clearly laid out in an easy-to-understand format. Now, granted, this book isn't the final version, so there are some errors here and there. However, as a whole, it's pretty simple to read and, and grasp the concept of what they're trying to get across to you. And next is character creation or leveling up. Character creation in Fate Core is extremely collaborative, much like the rest of the game, and is also tied in with setting creation. Both occur immediately after each other or simultaneously, and should involve everyone intending to play in the game. Now some aspects, lowercase a, uh, of the setting may already be determined, but a good portion of it should be decided upon by everyone together. There are no character classes in Fate Core. The closest the game comes to this would probably be something called the High Concept, which is pretty much the primary aspect of your character. This might be something like Knight of the Round, Low Level Thug, or Wizard Private Eye. The character creation itself breaks down into several steps. Uh, I won't get into too great a detail on them here, but these are uh, what the steps are. First is Aspects. You choose your character's High Concept and Trouble Aspects. I talked about what the high concept aspect is. A trouble aspect would be the equivalent of a what a flaw would be in other games. Although, like any other aspect, it can actually be invoked in a positive manner uh, when desired or when it would be applicable, like any other aspect. Next, you pick a name, which is self-explanatory. Third is the first phase. Uh, you discuss the first adventure that your character was a part of. Second and third phases in each of these, you discuss how your character crossed the path of another character. After that, you pick an aspect for each of the three phases that would apply to your character. So in each of these little backstory um, tales that you tell about your character and how they interact with some of the other players, you, uh, you pick an aspect that would apply to the situation and you give that aspect to your character. Then you choose skills. Uh, you pick your skills and you rate them. During character creation, a player has 10 levels of skills to distribute amongst their skill list. You get one skill at plus four, two at plus three, three at plus two, and four at plus one. Every other skill uh, at start is rated at plus zero, which is considered mediocre. Then you pick stunts. Uh, you either design or choose stunts for your character, and then you pick your refresh, which is how many fate points you start each session with. Um, your refresh is directly affected by stunts that you choose. You get one stunt for free, and then every stunt after that decreases your refresh by one, which starts at three. So say you pick your free stunt, and you wanted to pick one more stunt, you would have a refresh at two, so every session you would start the game out with two fate points. And then last, you do stress and consequences. You uh, figure out how many of each of the stress and consequence boxes that your character has. Now, I think the most important parts of character creation to touch on in the review would be steps three and four. Uh, as I said, in these steps, not only do you get to flesh out your character's history, you also get to determine how you know the other characters in your group, you get to affect the world in a concrete manner, and you indicate what kind of game you're looking forward to playing. Leveling up occurs during milestones. These t there's three types of milestones are minor, significant, or major, and they determine how exactly you're allowed to change your character. Uh, from switching out aspects to gaining new stunts to improving skills past where they start. These generally occur at the end of a session, and the GM determines uh, by where they are in the story what kind of milestone it's going to be. So again, just a real quick summary of uh, the mechanic system of Atmosphere. Uh, the use of aspects in Fate Core has illustrated to me that it's just about the perfect medium for storytelling. Uh, the dice mechanics are unique and uncomplicated. You simply roll, add an appropriate skill, and apply to the latter. Combat is fast-paced, has lasting story effects, and is only dead deadly when narratively appropriate. 
Character creation and setting of creation occur simultaneously, and both are collaborative, involving everyone around the table. A portion of character creation is determining your character's first adventure, as well as how he met two of the other characters. He then chooses aspects based on each of these three events that will have a long-term effect on them. Again, collaborative with all the other players, much like the rest of the game is meant to be. Character advancement happens during milestones. Again, those are minor, significant, or major, and it's determined by the GM. Each of these has a list of advancements the character is able to make. In short, in a game that's intended to be fast-paced, engaging, and extremely narrative, I'm not sure if I could come up with a better system to accomplish all of that than Fate Core. I give Mechanics to Atmosphere rating 5 out of 5 stars. The area that we're moving on to is complexity. The complexity of a system can not only have an effect on general playability, but also as to how newbie-friendly it is. Because of this, the complexity of a game is the second of my key concepts as it applies to the basic system, players, and GMs. First, the basic system. I think this is one of those things that depend on the player. In general, I would say that it might seem confusing on the first read-through of the Fate Core book. But once you've had a chance to play it for even one session, I think things, things are going to start quickly clicking into place. It boils down to roll, you roll four dice, total them, add appropriate skill bonuses, aspects, and you apply it to the ladder. If you beat the difficulty opposition, you succeed. If not, you fail or succeed at a price. Complexity in relationship to the player. Uh, this is a game where if you don't want to go into detail on what you're doing or have a say in what's going on in the world, it might be a bit too complex for you. Fate Core is very much a collaborative storytelling game in every sense of the word. While the game may not be too complex rules-wise for players used to saying, I attack the orc, I think it might be d description wise Fate is very much a game of thinking on your feet and creating advantages where there aren't any immediately apparent. Um, while the players may not necessarily have as much say in the world as a whole as the GM, they do have a say in what is present in the world. And speaking of the GM, complexity is a applies to the Game Master. This, I would say, is kind of a tough one to gauge. Some of the storytelling is taken out of the GM's hands, making life a little bit easier. On the flip side of that coin, some of the storytelling is taken out of the GM's hands. In addition to normal duties, a Game Master for Fate has to really be able to fly by the seat of his pants when it comes to dealing with new aspects, situations, places created by the players during the course of the game. And in addition, Fate has no default setting, which means that the Game Master has a bit more to do prep-wise. However, as I mentioned earlier, much of the setting creation is done collaboratively during character creation, so it might not be quite as involved as in other generic role-playing systems. Uh, again, the quick summary of this, after you dive into a game of Fate, the basic rules should come along fairly quickly, unless you're uncomfortable having more say in the creation of evolution of the story than you're used to as a player. Game Masters don't have a base setting to work off of, but much of that is handled during character creation anyway, so as generic rule systems go, it's a bit ahead of the curve. For complexity rating, I'm giving it 4 to 5 stars, just because it's not necessarily going to be a game that everyone's going to be able to. I am primarily a GM when I play, so the third of my key concepts is how useful the GM section of a book is for potential GMs. Some are extremely in-depth and some are basically useless. The Fate Core book is a bit more interwoven regarding player and GM sections. I expected this, given how much of everything that happens is a collaborative effort. That being said, when the book does get to GM-specific areas of running the game, designing scenarios, etc., it does do a good job of getting the point across. Um, my first is running the game. This portion of the book is more of an extended overview of exactly what it is a GM does. It also differentiates between the tasks of a GM in other games and the tasks of a GM in Fate. Throughout this area, as with the rest of the book, there are sidebars giving hints and tips for GMs to help them get the feel of the game and to keep things running smoothly. Now, This section covers such topics as how to start and end scenes, playing the world and NPCs, judging the use of rules and when or if they should be used, and creating scenarios and games or campaigns. It does go into more detail on how to make failure awesome, and it gives suggestions on ways to fail the role but still succeed at the task, at a cost or with complications. This also covers most of the things the players read, but from the GM's angle, as well as touching on odd situations that might crop up, and different ways to resolve them quickly and to the benefit of the group as a whole. 
the next section they talk about is creating campaigns. The Fate Core Book goes into a great detail about how to create memorable villains, designing games that your players are going to like, how to determine difficulties of actions in any given adventure and balancing the game. The portions of the book covering adventure campaign creation are extremely in-depth, and they make a great read in general, even if you don't intend to use the Fate Core system itself. Quick, again, my quick summary of the GM section. Um, it covers everything previously in the book from the GM's perspective. It is also a great resource for adventure campaign building, even if you're not going to be playing Fate. I give the GM section rating 5 out of 5. In my future reviews, I'm going to uh, in introduce another key concept called in the included adventure. Um, ideally, this is going to give GMs an idea of what a general adventure in the system should look like while keeping it easy to reference. I can't really rate this section in Fate Core. The reason is that those who have pledged the Kickstarter campaign are going to be receiving at least one adventure in PDF form at least that works with the system. However, none of them are in the core rulebook itself, which is completely understandable given how generic it is. Um, I can see why the designers wouldn't want to put an adventure in that might imply the system was meant for fantasy or sci-fi or you know pulp. Um, because Fate is something that can be applied to pretty much any genre successfully if you look for ways to do it. My last key concept is my potential concerns section. It's a section that isn't only devoted to things I don't like about a game, but also potential problems that don't bother me, but might bug other people. Uh, this section isn't rated as it is even more subjective than the rest of my review is. Uh, Fate is a collaborative game, pure and simple. For players of D&D, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, etc., uh, it could take a little bit of getting used to, and may not be everyone's cup of tea. Everybody has to be willing to have input in regards to the world and can't be afraid to think outside the box and role play. My other potential concern is that this isn't the finished product. You know, this is, as I said, this is a Kickstarter draft. Um, I don't expect too much to change terribly drastically from what's in this iteration of the rules, but until that final version is released, that possibility does exist. Now, in closing, I am preparing to run my first Fate game with a few members of RPGGeek.com, and I've been working on adapting Time Heroes to the system. Uh, I think Fate is a fantastic generic system, and the fact that the designers are so open about how everything works makes it really a joy for me to tinker with. Lastly, I think that as this game is going to be OGL, it just makes the system even better. Uh, the Kickstarter still has about a week left as of, as of this review, and if you pledge even a dollar to it, you're going to have full access to, to this PDF that I've just completed reviewing. As I mentioned earlier, if you pledge at least $10, you get the PDFs of not only the Fate Core book, but all of the expansions that are listed in the uh, stretch goals. And again, if you look in the comments section, I'm going to post a direct link to the Kickstarter page because there is still a week left. And I think, at the very least, this is a book that everyone should at least give a read to because it's, it's, it's good stuff. So uh, thank you for watching today. I hope I enlightened you a little bit as to how Fate Core works, what exactly it's about. And stay tuned. Uh, my next video review is going to be on one of my old personal favorites from back in the day, Extreme Vengeance. It doesn't get enough love. I don't know how many copies are out there, but uh, it's a good high-octane action-packed game for those of you that love uh, action-style role-playing games. So again, thank you and have a great night.